Good morning, Lobster Crew. Good morning. It's 10.03 a.m. Friday, the 9th of November. Nine days in to No Nut November. I've started to hallucinate. I'm pouring sweat from every orifice. Roughly 23 hours a day. I only give myself an hour off for this show. And then I go back to pouring liquid frustration out of myself. Apart from out of the front tail. It's no no business. I'm not even urinating. That's how far I'm taking No Nut November. I'm storing all the pee in my balls. That's where the pee is stored. I look like one of those geezers that's injecting uh, silicone into their nuts for fashion purposes. Lifestyle choice. Not one I agree with. Um, but, you know, each their own. Live and let live. That's what I say. That's what John B said. Uh, to forgive uh, his beef with Twisted Individual. Live and let live. Why not? Look into it. Yeah, I think this is perhaps not the ideal tool for hitting the soundboard. Uh, a plastic lobster. Wesley Snips, uh, Jude Claw, Cindy Clawford, um, Brad, Chad, Brett, Jordan B. Lobster. How are you all, Lobster Crew? There was an assault on the lobsters overnight on SoundCloud. Uh, a young man, uh, he said, why don't you just play music? What is all this talking and bollocks about lobsters? Or something to that effect. Uh, so that is a, an out-and-out act of terrorism declared on, on the Lobster Crew as a whole. I, for one, won't stand for it. So uh, I did the only thing possible, uh, which was to reply... Uh, with the word lobsters, and hopefully that should be enough to put out the flames. Uh, to but you know it's it's a sign of the times, isn't it, that there is already an evil anti-lobster constituent in the midst, and uh, it's it's only a matter of time before it's it's all out war. So you know, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. You know, batten down the hatches board up your windows, stock up on tinned food and bottled water, and make sure you have a ready supply of coffee and memes. Steady job, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. If you're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slubby. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Well, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy and that's funny and it's 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 kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and 
all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen of the Flat Earth, welcome to Threshold.fm, welcome to Coffee and Memes, your morning dose of liquid insanity pumped into you like some sort of sordid enema in a backstreet surgery that you've paid for in bitcoins and your dignity. I've got some um, <laughs> I've got some good bits today uh, to finish off the week with. Uh, it's been a suitably insane week uh, in the simulation and there is definitely some there's definitely some wildness to discuss with uh, a nice collection of shoe throwers here and we will uh, all collectively decide on shoe thrower of the week uh i've got uh, there's a new bit here by face i've got some calyx and tb some forward uh classic bit of audio new bit of dub physics new misanthrope <sighs> Lobsters. Great stuff. Uh, look, what are we going to... Um, oh, there's all sorts of madness. Parrot brands Donald Trump a wanker during foul mouth political rant. <laughs> Parrots are out of control. Um, Philip Schofield can't stop laughing as man on this morning discusses what it's like to use penis filler. Okay, good to know. I'm your biggest fan. I legally changed my last name to Harry Styles. Oh, God, he's a truly terrifying individual. Men are injecting... Oh, there's a whole Metro article here about the injecting of the balls with the uh, silicone. It is, this is like a 3,000-word essay on it. Um, it just says, men are injecting filler into their scrotums to get bigger balls. So it does seem like a subtle uh, sort of dig that perhaps all men are doing it. We're all doing it. And uh, maybe if you can't see the huge pouch, they've, they've just only just started, but they're all doing it. And they need to be stopped. They're out of control. Uh, I've got a man who has declared that he's travelled the solar system and uh, he gave God his name. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, we'll, we'll get in, into him in a little bit. And uh, how dangerous is masturbating with a vacuum cleaner? We'll be looking into that later. Thanks, Metro. Uh, you never disappoint. Right, look, let's get stuck into these shoe throws, though. Uh, this is isolated by face. Uh, it has all the hallmarks of being a properly naughty bit of gear. Oh, yes.
This is a real beastly bit of care. Mr. Downer in the chat suggesting I uh, <laughs> make a sample of the classic Groove Rider and Fabio jingle from their Radio 1 show. Oh my god, this tune deserves a rewind! <laughs> I think we might need one. I think we probably do need a She Thrower of the Week jingle as well. Some sort of fanfare. Maybe, you know, some confetti that comes down on the screen. You know, all of these things would be possible if I, if I had a huge, yeah, with, with a monstrous Radio 1 budget, you know, paid for. Effectively, you know, it's the license fee, isn't it? It's kind of a tax. It's just a tax that you can't, you, know, you can't avoid paying it. Oh, but don't watch the telly. You fucking have to pay it anyway. Oh, all right. Sorry. Yeah, I could get some, uh, get some lads in to do all sorts of video action and stuff. If anyone wants to volunteer their services for free, I would I'd be very happy to accept. Uh, that is Isolated by Face. That is a really, really good record. Uh, that is, um, yeah, I'm, well, so I don't know what's going to beat that. Uh, um, well, I'd say odds on. If Paddy Power or something is going to start putting down odds on, uh, on what's it going to be, I'll say that's probably about like 11 to like... 11 to 2 odds or something like you're going to need to put down like a couple hundred quid to even make a tenner. So all I'm saying, but, you know, there are some outside chances that, you know, Calix and TB could come in there or form. Anyway, sorry, guys, uh, I, uh, I should get onto the news. Married man who travels UK offering door-to-door sperm delivery service from a white van has 65 children and hopes to reach 100. Lobsters. Oh, Christ. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Um, he seems like a cool dude. Clive, 62, former maths teacher from Burton. It's fucking 62 and he's doing this. I'm not being funny, but like, you, if you're that old, like the, the chances of birth defects are really significantly higher from uh, with sperm from men that age. And if you just, if you're bloody pumping them out by the dozen as well. Yeah, yeah. It's appalling. Uh, Clive, 62, former maths teacher from Burton, Staffordshire, delivers sperm. He does not charge, and he says he does it for the smile on his recipient's face, and presumably to, you know, spread his DNA far and wide. On his arrival, he fills a syringe with his product before carrying it to the house, keeping it warm in the crook of his arm. Oh, Jesus. Look at the state of him as well. Like, he... I... Look. Come on, should we get him up on the bloody screen? Where is he? Uh, hold on. Here he is. Like, he doesn't... He's not a good-looking man. He's not a good-looking fella. He's got boot-cut jeans on. Granted, he's wearing boots, but... he And he's got a sort of knackered old... Tra- not even a transit van, is it? It's one of those sort of half halfway houses, halfway between a sort of... You know, one of those ones that's just like a Voxel Astra with the back windows covered up, like Side 20 of Trickstar Radio has. And it's a little bit further. I don't know what's going on. It's like a Postman Pat sort of van, isn't it? It's like, yeah, you can probably get, like, I don't know, a floor sander in there, but you'd struggle to get a mattress in it. Anyway, the van is not the issue. The white van or no white van. Geezer is just going door to door. Give it. I mean, are these people ordering it from him or is he just turning up at people's houses and going, here, I've got a delivery for you. All right, what's that? It's a syringe of seminal fluids that I uh, that I recently ejaculated. Oh, uh, did I order this? <laughs> I don't know. Let me just check my Amazon account. Uh, yeah, okay, all right, let's get into it. Come on, let's find out what is uh, rationale behind all this fucking madness. He's married. What's his wife say about this? He must be going broke from all the bloody child support. I hope he's getting contracts or something. Like... This is appalling. This is appalling. <laughs> I'm triggered by this. 
Uh, many sperm donors choose to keep their identity a secret, but not Clive, a former maths teacher who's fathered 65 children and aims to soon hit 100. I guess you've got to have goals in life, haven't you? To orientate yourself in the world. Like most white van drivers, Clive is a delivery man. Is that what most white van drivers are doing? Uh, but the nature of his packages are somewhat out of the ordinary, reports The Sun. The married 62-year-old delivers sperm, his own, to wedding recipients free of charge. Like, if you were... Okay, so let's... let's Possible opportunities. You are in a, a, a relationship and you can't... And your, your fella is, is firing blanks, to, to, for the want of a better term, and so you need a sperm donor. Okay, uh, or you're, choo- you're a single woman, you're choosing to go it alone. Like, it's like, do you go to a sperm bank and, and well, you want, like, surely you want the best possible DNA. And I'm, look, no offence, Clive, but you just don't look like, you're not at the deep end. You're not at the deep end of the gene pool, are you? Is that, are you wearing cowboy boots or are they Chelsea boots? What's going on? Get your act together. Um, <laughs> uh, he happily gives up whole days to drive from his family home to Staffordshire or whenever he is needed. Oh, nice for him to give up a day of his time to, time to father a child. On arrival, Clive parks in a nearby street before climbing into the back of his van, where he fills a syringe with his product before... Is he, do, is he just whacking off? Is this some fucking whack that he's driving round in? Just some sordid little... Having some sordid little hairy-handed workout in there before he bloody yomps out the back of it or stinking of his own muck I'm appalled by this I'm really just this is so bad uh, there he fills the syringe oh god a tip he says is to keep the donation in a cr- in the crook of your arm to keep it warm alright I'll take that on board should I ever start up a sperm delivery service uh, he then usually engages his recipients in a few seconds of idle chat before jumping back in his van uh, often he says they're nervous uh, but he helps put them at ease, perhaps talking about the weather or something like that. I know this is probably unusual, but for me, uh, by doing it in the van, there is far less involvement, less emotional attach. Oh, he see, he is whacking it out in the van. He's a danger to society. He is a menace. He should be stopped. This is appalling. <laughs> oh, it goes on for ages. Oh, oh God. Uh I'm so proud I fathered 79 children. It says 65 at the top. Or have you just... Are there a load on the way? You've got, like, bloody 14 pregnant lasses out there. Uh, thank you so much, Clive. You have really changed our lives. I hate Clive. Honestly, I I hate him. <laughs> He's awful. Right, okay. Uh, here's Talk To Me by Forward. This is good. I'm, um, I'm into this. Fucking Clive, man. Lobsters. I'm putting him in the same category as the guy on SoundCloud who said, what are you talking about? Just play records. What's all this lobster bollocks? <laughs> <laughs> There's some good communist banter going on in the chat. Thank you. 
This is Talk To Me by Forward. It's on mainframe. Imagine that. Okay, let's get into the important questions. How dangerous is masturbating with a vacuum cleaner? <sighs> They've got a picture of a nice sort of um, lilac, uh, Henry the Hoover, uh, except it says horny instead of Henry. A bit of fun, isn't it? Uh, as, with me- <laughs> as with many a morbid urban legend, uh, the story starts off with someone's madcap MacGyver masturbation technique. <laughs> Next thing the story's protagonist knows, they're ankle deep in spermy blood and one limb lighter. Penis not technically a limb, but okay. Uh, One morbid tale you may have heard of is a boy who masturbated with a vacuum cleaner. Uh, He was always someone's grand's neighbour or a mate of some storyteller who they met on a pool table on a holiday in Benidorm. Uh, So instead of trusting these shady, non-existent people, let Get Freaky, a um, collection of a very low quality articles in the Metro, tell you all about it. And let's separate the fact and fiction. The story goes like this. Teenage boy is full of raging hormones and has exhausted the list of household items to put his penis inside. Uh, teenage boy decides the suction pipe of the vacuum cleaner would be the ideal next step. Now, that the, the uh, vacuum cleaner comes very high up the list. It's, this is not something you get to after exhausting lots of other options. This is... Uh, I mean, it's it's almost first choice, really. Like, oh well, what could I put put my put my peen in? Well, obviously, the thing that sucks first would probably be a logical step. As you can tell, well, this is written by a girl. She doesn't understand <laughs> doesn't understand the ways of the teenage boy. Teenage boy's sexy machine BJ dreams are then shattered by a feature in the vacuum cleaner to keep it unclogged. A spinning blade just inside the pipe. I don't believe such a thing exists. Uh, the likelihood is the story was an urban legend which was repopularized when Chuck Palahniuk's 2001 book Choke came out. Okay. Uh, early in the novel, the narrator speaks to the urban legend saying, in the 1950s, the leading vacuum cleaner tried a little design improvement. It was a spinning propeller, uh, a razor-sharp blade mounted a few inches inside the vacuum hose. In gushing air would spin the blade, and the blade would chop until uh, any lint or string or pet hair that might clog the hose. At least that was the plan. But it wouldn't spin if you stuck your pain into it. The, the airflow would have stopped. Anyway, uh, what happens <laughs> is that a lot of men race to the emergency room with their dicks all mangled. Okay, so is there any truth in it? That's what we want to know, Metro. Come on, get, get, to, get, to, the, uh, get to the good side. The reality is that these vacuum cleaners uh, did exist, and one German doctor did his PhD thesis on this very topic, presenting cases of men whose penises had been mangled by a certain brand of cleaner. Oh, God. <laughs> One article in the British Medical Journal in 1985 listed five men who'd found themselves inside a vacuum cleaner, all with disastrous consequences. Ouch. Uh, This particular model seemed to be a common denominator uh, in this entry, as it had 15 centimetre blades inside the hose. 15 centimetres? Oh, it had blades 15 centimetres inside the hose, uh, which caused the damage. 15 uh, 15 centimetres of spit. Yeah, yeah, that's just going to chop the tip of your bell off, really, isn't it? Um, you may notice from the current model that, while present, the blades are much further inside the appliance than any penis would be able to go. Um, that is if, if you exclude handheld models. Blah, 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 blah. God, this goes on for ages. Um, this is a weekly a weekly thing. Oh, this is from the same series that brought you Can You Get an STD off a toilet seat, which the answer was no. <sighs> Thanks, Metro. That's 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 brilliant. That's that's really great stuff. 
Okay, chubby cat strolls into Tesco's to steal some treats and takes a nap. Fucking state of this little twat. Jesus Christ, he's probably been out stealing drugs, hasn't he? He's probably stolen a load of ganja, got all razzed up on it. Now he's got the munchies and he's bloody... I think it's, it's hilarious that he's gone in and actually got the cat food. Look, look at this fat twat. Where is he? Here he is. Look at the little mug. <laughs> look at that fat little mug. Absolute state of you, mate. Absolute state of you. You're out of control. You need work. They need to put him down. <laughs> that's that's enough. I'm sorry. You've crossed a line here, cat. Or whatever your name is. You need to. Be, that's it. This may sound draconian. This may sound a little bit, a little bit authoritarian. But I think I should put him down. That's it. He's out of control. He can't be trusted. I'm sorry. You've broken the social contract, cat. You can't go and steal stuff. There, there's. <laughs> you've broken the cat law, and I'm afraid the punishment is death. You get to choose uh, your death. Uh, you can either have a lethal injection or electric chair. Then, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, it's, I'm sorry, I had to had to come down to this. I'm sure you understand. It's like, well, it's a fair cop, governor. You silly fat cat. Anyway, right. Look, there's uh, Calix and TB. I think this is a possible uh, contender for sheath thrower of the week. It's called Warpath.
right, that was Warpath by Calix and TB. Uh, let me know in the chat whether or not you feel that supersedes Isolated by Face. Personally, I don't think it does. It's a fucking banger, don't get me wrong, but that face tune is something else. Uh, all right, more sperm news, as I've seen a related story on the side of that. 17 British sperm donors father more than 500 offspring sparking fears of incest and faulty genes. 17 sperm donors have fathered more than 500... Just, just repeating it all again. And then they repeat it all again. Um, it also means siblings could be forming relationships without knowing they are related. That's a truly harrowing thought. New figures from the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority show that 17 men have fathered at least 30 babies each between 1991 and 2015. A further 104 men have fathered between 20 and 29 babies and 1,500 men between 10 and 19. More than 6,000 have created nine or fewer. Although donated sperm is tested for serious diseases such as HIV, hepatitis B and C, Kreutzfeld, Jakob disease, Huntington's and cystic fibrosis, donors are not screened for genes which increase the risk of certain cancers. Um, and conditions such as Alzheimer's disease. Got to get you checked for the EPOE4 gene, bitch. Um, the charity Ovarian Cancer Action said testing is only carried out if there is a family history of cancer. Um, yes, this is, yeah. What they should have done uh, is bought it off a guy called Clive who just wanks in the back of a van, turns up at your door with it. Uh, it didn't even think, it cross my mind that perhaps you might want to screen it to make sure that he's not ill, on meow meow, uh, a sex robot gone mad, um, or part lobster. He... <laughs> I can't believe that, like, I, I, just, I just can't get my head around Clive. All right, I can understand his motivation sort of for it. I just can't understand the... I guess people might find themselves in desperate situations, but how, like... When is it not an option to go to a normal sperm bank and instead call a man in a white van who's 65 and wears boot cut jeans? I just... Uh, if anything, it's the boot cut jeans that have, that have triggered me the most. I, I'm, I'm struggling with it. Why? 65... He, well, what he should do is he should at least change his age. Like, he should get his age legally changed to, like, 35. That would help, wouldn't it? Get a better van. I think if he got a nice branded van, it's got. It's going to be white, obviously, but he could have a big Clive Spunk written on the side of it. God, are there any good news? Donkey nannies exist, and this is the best news we've heard all year. Oh, donkey nannies. Well, the fuck are donkey nannies? All oh, right, they've just stuck some other animals on the side of a donkey for a laugh. Oh, here we go. Come on, let's get them up. There they are. What, well, they're playing fucking animal Jenga? What is this, just a giant live game of buckaroo? You think this is a joke? Seriously, uh, this is the best news we've heard all year. The world lifts a quarter of a million people out of extreme poverty every day. But to you, Hattie Gladwell of the Metro, the best news you've heard all year is that they've stuck goats on the side of a donkey. It's been a tough day today, guys. You know, it's been, it's been a tough week. There's been some weird shit in the news. You know, and uh, maybe it's, I think the sex robot news has really started to jade me and really pushed me to almost breaking point this week. I think I'm going to have to have like a real cleanse, a sort of uh, de news detox over the weekend where perhaps I'll just, I'll have like a matcha tea enema or something and maybe I can just uh, watch... Uh, Watch some Disney films. They're probably problematic, though, aren't they? Most things are. What am I going to do? Maybe I'll just listen to that face tune on repeat all weekend. That, that's, yeah, that'll do. Maybe I'll just listen to this by Carol. It's out now on Critical. Uh, <laughs> that'll just cleanse me of all the hideous sex robot nonsense and uh, other terrible news stories. Fucking Clive! Oh, 
terrified. I, I, that's all I'm going to think about when I see white vans now. Right, look, this is uh, by Traced. It's called, not Trace, Traced. Past tense. Uh, it's called The Time Is Now. It's nice. It's a... It's, yeah. Potential challenger, although I, th I really do think Face has got it sewn up, really. Crash test in the chat. Yes, having sex with a robot would break No Nut November. It's the nutting that's the issue, not the whether or not it's a human or an inanimate object that receives the nut. Some real heft in this. Uh, ben Wilson can slip a slinger of the week be a silver price uh, because uh, it doesn't quite this doesn't quite hit the face tune, but it's still an absolute shoe thrower. The, well, we need to decide on the hierarchy of of shoe throwing like what is I, I personally feel Yeezy Yeeter is at the top it's like flip flop flinger down the bottle bottom slipper slinger sa sandal slinger loafer launcher mm. oh the bronze brogue High top hurler, I think. Trainer tosser. Oh, Timberland tosser. Oh, imagine just lobbing a fresh pair of Tims for this. Oh. Yeah, that's The Time Is Now by Trace. Man, that's a hell of a joint. Hoo-wee. Uh, that's on Dirtbox Recordings. Man. Trace, you naughty motherfucker. 
Good stuff. Ed Max, that's good. That's that's good. That is good, Tom Can. I I mean, yeah, I like that. Okay, here we go. Uh, Philippines pastor claims uh, he pastor 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 claims he travelled the solar system. And who are we to question him? Quite frankly, uh, Apollo C. Quiboli. That's a fine fucking name, was born in a small village in the Philippines. It is claimed that at birth his mother saw a vision of the face of God smiling down from the sky, which said to her, that is my son. After high school, uh, Quiboli attended a Bible college and later became the national youth president for the United Pentecostal Church. It was after this that he formed his own organization, the Kingdom of Jesus Christ of the Name Above Every Name Incorporated. <laughs> Fuck it. <now. laughs> the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, the Name Above Every Name Incorporated. Yeah, the best of all of the bestest out there in all of the bestest land, limited. Uh, on September 1st, 1985. Uh, uh, anyway, he um, he's made some bold claims over the years, uh, it turns out. Uh, they have a list of uh, Quiboli's claims here. He says, one, I am now the owner of the earth. <laughs> I am now the owner of the world. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know whether or not, maybe did he find the deeds uh, somewhere and just cheekily change his name? Uh, he owns uh, I'm the owner of all souls on earth um, you, no I'll fight you for mine happily honestly name your rule set I'll fight you for it I, he's I'm much bigger than him he's I probably got tw I'm probably 20 years his junior I'm, honestly he wouldn't stand a chance I've just flattened him like he's ne there is no way I'm going to let him have ownership of my soul. It's just it's just not going to happen. Three, I defeated Lucifer in my kingdom. All right, the terms have changed a little bit. If you really genuinely did defeat the devil, maybe you've got a bit about you. Maybe you can have a tear up. Maybe you know you're a bit rowdy. You're a bit rascal. Possibly. I don't know. I haven't seen. I haven't seen your highlights reel on YouTube. You know, I haven't uh, listened to a Robin Black breakdown of your technique. I haven't had. I, I mean, Rogan hasn't mentioned you once on any of the Fight Companion podcasts. So I don't know, but pff, maybe you've got some sort of hoodoo, voodoo, you know, poo poo poo. The you know, anyway, the Father God did not adopt their names. Their names of the denominations or religion is man-made. It's Matt. Uh, he God adopted my name, and he God made it his own name. See, God stole your name. Quiboli. Um, I'm not really that handsome, but my standard is very high if you want to marry. <laughs> uh, that sounds like uh, some men I know. Uh, if <laughs> Again, like I stick up for men, but they don't do themselves any favours sometimes. Uh, I was thinking this particularly today. I was standing at the station and I looked around and it, it seemed like I was the only person there that didn't have a really terrible goatee beard. I've never fully understood the goatee because I've never, I personally, have. I don't think anyone has ever looked good with it, yet men continue to shave goatee beards. Um, I mean, I just wonder what sort of, what sort of arrogance... It takes for someone to think, I'm. no one has ever looked good with this beard, but I'm going to do it because I believe that I will be the exception. I will be the one to make the goatee beard look good. The arrogance of the man. Anyway, uh, I am not really that handsome, but my standard is very high if I want to marry. It's good to know. Uh, if I ever see something, even a little detail in your face, uh, that I do not like, I will turn my back on you. Example. <laughs> when we are talking and there is a hair sticking out of your nose, you're done for. <laughs> he should hook up with that girl that wrote the, like, 25-point list about things her boyfriend's not allowed to do. Six. Angels visit me. Uh, he said your name... <laughs> what? And he said your name is now my name, purely. What does that mean? God gave me his name and he took my name as his new. 
Uh, the Third Testament, which is a book of fulfillment, is directed by the appointed son, me, uh, who is the new owner of the world. That's cool. It doesn't have any um, any further info on the claims that he has travelled the solar system, but I'm keen to find out. Uh, thanks to whoever posted that in the Lobster Crew group. Good work. He seems like a truly twisted individual. Right, what have we got left, really? Any, any ch- Let's play this classic old bit of audio. This is Collision. Off the Genesis Device album. the idea of just claiming that you own the world I mean oh prove otherwise <laughs> security lockdown in effect Mum of four finally stops breastfeeding her youngest daughter, age nine. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Collision by audio. 
Was that on the Virus album? It certainly was on Genesis Device. Nicey, nicey, nicey. Um, right, cut. there's a few more bits here. <laughs> Deadly choking game, sweeping schools where teens try to cut off oxygen to the brain. Yep, it's called jujitsu. I do it most days. <laughs> uh, a dangerous choking game is sweeping schools, despite a string of deaths linked to the trend. The deadly craze, which involves people deliberately strangling themselves or each other, uh, is being fueled by teens uploading the acts to social media. It's also known as the fainti fainting game. The aim is to cut off oxygen to the brain and pass out <laughs> before video footage uh, before video footage of the incident is posted online. What? Oh well. Uh, the shocking game, which has been played for several years and blamed for a string of deaths, has now surged in popularity again. Last month, 11-year-old Carson Bodkins is believed to have died after playing the viral challenge at his home in Elizabeth, Colorado, U U.S. No, they, you need to tap. You have to tap before you go unconscious. That's how it works. God, kids are mad, aren't they? Like, like we were all mad. Like, just doing crazy, really just... <laughs> I blame the internet and thus Zuckerberg uh, by proxy. I think it's all his fault. I think his uh, reptilian cyborg ways are ruining our fair planet Earth. Him and Bezos, they gang up together, the two of them. They, they go out on the Raz. Uh, him, Bezos, um, Larry Page from Google and um, who else? Alan Sugar, probably as well. They all go out, they get on the karate powder, don't they? Go to a Weatherspoons or something, get bloody razzed up in the disabled bogs on some sort of low-quality karate powder, and then they make up these games, they spread them around the internet, and now now people are suffering as a consequence. It's it's not on. It's absolutely not on. What have we got? Head teacher forces pupils to smoke as bizarre punishment for being caught smoking. These children are um, very, very young. Uh, look. They're like, I don't know, seven or eight, maybe? I don't know. That's, that's definitely too young. Um, I thought there was a little video of him. Yeah, Mum. Oh, there they are. Look at them, just honking, honking down some tabs. Got some sound. They look pretty cool. Yeah, I'm just puffing away. Jesus, this. They, they just look confused. The one in the middle, he. He still definitely is the coolest. He's not phased by it at all. The other ones are just super confused. Reminds me a little bit of that episode of King of the Hill where the dad catches the son smoking and forces him to smoke about 20 packs until he's sick. Okay, it can work. It can work. Oh, God. I'm your biggest fan. I legally changed my last name uh, after Harry Styles. Um... He looks truly terrifying. Bless him, though. Um, he's got a T-shirt that says, uh, treat people with kindness. And yes, yes, definitely do. Uh, I would also suggest treating uh, this gentleman uh, with caution as well, particularly if you're Harry Styles. <laughs> he, lo he looks like he might cuddle, cuddle Harry Styles to death, like a bit of a sort of Lenny from Of Mice and Men situation. <laughs> <laughs> squeezing him and squeezing him. Oh, my days. Um, yeah, he looks like... Uh, I don't know. He looks like he'd be a lot of fun at parties. The super fan is a brilliant specimen. I think that's supposed to say this super fan, Mel, Ev Mel Evans. This is uh, deemed an exclusive in the Metro. Wow, I really got the scoop on this one, yeah? Um, for eons, we've worshipped at the altars of sports stars, pop stars, actors, fictional characters, collectibles art, cars, and just about anything else we can relate to and share with others simply to connect in some way. Uh, also known as a fanatic, but let's face it, fan is much more sexy. These super fans have travelled the globe to support their chosen love and we've tracked some of them down at the most die-hard and dedicated. Um, I'm not entirely sure what a Harry Styles is. Uh, he looks like a Mick Jagger for the Tide Pod generation. And... 
I quite want one of these Harry Styles T-shirts. Uh, maybe it didn't say Harry Styles on it. It just had his big sweating face. I could imagine that that's what it's like, him leering down over you. His pale, pale little millennial body pounding away, doing his best. Doing his best. Oh, baby Jesus. Right, look, we're going to play one more and then... I think we can we can all try and I think we should all have a sort of detox from the from the terrifying world we live in, uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll come back next week fresh and ready to really attack attack it like a dog with a bone. This is "Slap the Ghost" by Misanthrope. This is a hot bit. This is really cool. I like this a lot. <laughs> Lily, you're not keen at that mental image of Harry Styles. <laughs> Ponder it for a while. I might spend the weekend pondering it. Maybe I'll draw a little diagram of what I think it might look like. Ten years to the day since that guy threw a show threw a shoe at George Bush. Oh. International Shoe Throwers Day. Misanthrope and Synergy. It's called Slap the Ghost. It's on Neo Signal. Well, what do we crown Shoe Thrower of the Week? I'm calling it, I'm saying it. It's face. Isolated that it, dude, man, that is. Uh, come on, let's just have a little, uh, little, little dinger on it. Quick little dinger on it.
definitely time for a little corner. Cheeky key. Hundred percent confirmed. Isolated by face wins. Coffee and meme shoe thrower of the week on this week. Uh, beginning the what did it begin? The fourth or the fifth? The fifth? The fourth? The fifth? Forget it. This week, first proper week of November. First full week of November. All right, fine. Okay, good. Whew. Mr. Merck in the chat saying he prefers the uh, classic audio tune. Each their own, man. Each their own. Live and let live. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is the perfect time to shout out the VIP list. A list of bad motherfuckers supporting the show on Patreon. It's Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Moss and Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Sierra and R, Michael Kaziski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pine, Anthony Walker. <laughs> Don't forget, you can get this as a podcast. All the episodes are up. You can get it on Apple Podcasts, on SoundCloud, on Stitcher, on Spotify. Right here on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lobster Crew. You're a fine, fine bunch of humans. I'm very much pro-human. I think we're all right. Look, have a decent weekend. Get out there, do some exercise, make some art, be good to people, help your, help your neighbour, help your mum, help an old lady across the road, um, help uh, Clive, uh, <laughs> help Clive go about his dirty business, providing spunk for those that need it. Oh, Clive, I'm going to have nightmares about Clive. Whenever I see a white van, I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm just going to get triggered. It's, it's. <laughs> I'm going to think that there's a 65 man in there, 65 year old man in there, just whacking himself into oblivion. He's whacking for Jesus. He's doing the Lord's work. Anyway, I love you all. I will see you next week at 10 a.m. I actually, if you, I'm playing records on Trickstar at six o'clock. I'll be DJing for uh, Denon. Uh, they've got some fancy new turntables that you can double drop stuff on one deck. So it's true. I'm not even lying. I'm not even lying. I wouldn't lie to you, Lobster Crew. So, yeah, six o'clock. I'll be DJing for a couple of hours on Trickstar, the mighty Trickstar radio. Uh, I'll say to say hi to Side 20 for you. Um, and from me and from... I don't want to call him Clive. I'm not going to call him Clive. From uh, Brett, Brent, uh, Wesley Snips, Cindy Clawford, Jude Claw, Jordan B. Lobster. Lobsters. Goodbye. Don't let your memes be dreams. I love you all very much. Toodles.